Have you ever thought in your life about how good is good enough? Have you ever noticed how much we compare ourselves? I mean, we compare ourselves constantly. I think I compare myself and don't even realize I'm doing it most of the time. For instance, let's, let's take the game of golf. You may not be a golfer, but, but think about this. You know, I, I've, I grew up in, in the game of golf. I, am I a good golfer? How do I know that? Do I compare my golf game to Phil Mickelson? Or do I compare my golf game to somebody that I play with at my regular club? How good is good enough? And how do you measure it? Think about goodness from a moral perspective. Does my life count? Is my life good enough compared to Gandhi and all that Gandhi did? Is my life good? Am I good compared to like Mother Teresa and all that she did? Am I good compared to like Martin Luther King and all that he did to confront injustice? Or am I good if I compare myself to a serial killer? Think about it. I mean, where is that scale and where does it stop and where does it start? I was born in Wichita, Kansas. I am an Air Force brat, if you will. Growing up on the base, it was a different time of life and it was a very safe environment to live in. If you walked into my house, the walls told a very different story. My mom was there to provide for our physical needs. She cooked, she cleaned, she bought the food, she bought the clothes, but she was not emotionally available for me. Um, she never really showed love and affection. She didn't show guidance. She didn't show comfort. There was a lot of temper, a lot of yelling. Um, my dad would break things when he got angry. Um, I was definitely a daddy's girl growing up, and my dad did invest time and attention with me. He played games with me, we walked, we would go to his office. Um, but in my middle school years, he's also the man that molested me over a period of years, and I have a very confusing relationship with him. I came out of childhood basically learning that love is conditional. You have to earn it. I'm not worthy just for being who I am and that I can't trust anybody completely and that I'm only safe if I am in control of my circumstances. My first semester in college at Auburn and my now husband Craig's last semester, we met and like I said, trust is an issue for me and I don't open up very easily around people. I'm very introverted. I would go with him to church at Auburn with, because he would just invite me to come with his family. We got married in that church and I still didn't really understand what I was hearing, but because I was married to a Christian man who needed to be in a church home, I was willing to go with him. And it, for a long time, it was more, I'm doing this for him. So I want to share with you uh, something that the Bible talks about, and it's, it's the human condition. And so uh, just kind of picture in your mind three circles. In the outermost circle uh, is the word sin. And this is one of the words that the Bible uses, and this is an action, an act. Uh, and then just inside of that is another circle, and it says trespass, or uh, another word uh, that's used there is transgression. But uh, this is a violation of a boundary or something like that. Uh, but really what you want to focus in on uh, is another circle, and it uses the word iniquity. Uh, and that's really our, our nature. That's our condition. Uh, that's the root of all of it. Uh, that's at the very center of us, and we inherit that. We can't do anything uh, about it, we just have it and it's there and it impacts every part of our life. And that's really the human condition. So Brian talked about the three levels, the three words of the human condition. So sin is an act of the will. Let, let's take a, an easy target like lying. I can choose not to lie. I may not always make it, but I, I mean, I can work pretty hard to be honest, and that's a, an act of the will. Now, there's another word, though. It's a little more deeper, a little more serious. It's a word called trespasses. Trespasses 
is also an act of the will. That is, let's give an, another example. Instead of lying, trespasses would be the idea there was a boundary for you, a lane, and you stepped outside of that lane. So let's take adultery. If I cheat on my wife, or if I choose not to cheat on my wife, that's an act of the will. So sin and trespasses, I can't be perfect, and I may not be perfect, but I can work really hard, and I, I may get close. It, it may not be adultery, it could be something else, but there's a line that I can work really hard not to cross. But then there is this idea that Brian talked about called iniquity. And it's not an act of the will. It is not an act of the will. It's a whole different thing. Sin and trespasses are symptoms of a deeper disease. And you can't do a thing about an internal condition. In fact, the internal condition is manifesting itself in the symptoms. Sins and trespasses are there because of iniquity. Everything I thought I had done in my own strength hadn't gotten me where I needed to be. I wasn't complete, I wasn't filled, I wasn't happy. I put on a brave face, I faked it well, and I realized that I needed Jesus to make me complete, to make me whole. And it was only as I accepted Jesus and moved forward in that reality that I could start opening myself up to the possibility of healing, moving forward from my past, and really finding the peace for my future. All right, so I want to share with you a, a verse from the Bible. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 21. And that's a, it's a letter that Paul wrote to a church in a town called Corinth. Uh, and he says this, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. And that's a really powerful verse. So I want you to think about it. That's how deeply God loves you. In, in a position where you could not possibly be good enough, God sent his son to be good enough on your behalf. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for you. You know what? Someone might be willing to put their life on the line for a really good person, somebody that they feel like is worth saving. But yet, if we were honest with ourselves, nobody would die for somebody that wasn't good enough. But yet here God is sending a son to die for all of us who aren't good enough. Uh, that's powerful, and that's real, and that's what love is. That's what God's love truly, truly is. When you have an internal condition, if you want to fix the symptoms, you're going to have to fix the condition. And the condition is that we need a Savior to cure iniquity. Jesus had a close friend, and his name was John. And John said this about Jesus. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John tells us right there, that the cure for iniquity is that you must be born again. That literally you have to repent of your sins and let Christ cover you so that you can take on a new family name. To each who did receive him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. There is a phrase that I often have a, a, just a difficult time with because I, I think it's misleading. There's this phrase, we're all God's children, and that's just not true. We are not all God's children. We are all God's creation. But if you just look at what John said in John chapter 1, 
If you want to be God's child, if you want to get into that family, that's only going to happen by adoption. And, and that is that the Son sets you free, that Jesus himself adopts you into his family. We're not all God's children. We are God's creation. But to be in the family of God means that you must be born again into it. And that only happens when you repent of your sins and fall under the, the new family name. I'm going to bet that you've got some questions and we want to give you answers. So we've developed a very simple tool called answers at clearview.org. And if you've got questions, email us and we will help you move down the path toward Christ in your spiritual journey. Hey, would you do us one other favor? Would you be willing to put this on your Facebook or on your social media feed? Or how about this? Just text the link to a good friend. If you know somebody is searching for hope, just send them this episode and let them look at it for themselves. 